Brenda has done a thorough job giving you a lot of good information about what to expect um, in fourth grade. Homework, we try to keep pretty minimal, um, 20 minutes of reading a night um, at home, and um, it's a spelling test each week and studying spelling words during the week. Um, for math, um, we have what is called a math for today test on Friday, um, and it's based on um, some spiral skills that we work on throughout the year as well as um, focus skills that we have concentrated on that week. And they will bring home one paper, like on that paper, and you had some problems that were marked to be sure to study so that you would be prepared for the test on Wednesday. Well, that is what you're going to see on Thursday of this week. Um, they'll bring home that paper, and there will be 10 problems that will be marked to go over and review. Make sure you understand that kind of problem because you're going to have 10 problems like that on the test on Friday. Um, your child really should not come home with um, schoolwork that would take more than 10 to 15 minutes to complete. If they do, um, like Mrs. Lawrence said, maybe it's an assignment from science or social studies to complete. Maybe your child was absent and um, needed a little extra time to complete um, an assignment, but your child would have a week to complete a science or social studies um, assignment. If you ever have any questions, uh, feel free to let us know. We'll be happy to, to answer for you. Uh, one of the things that Mrs. Lawrence just leaned over and she said, oh, I forgot to tell them really one exciting thing that we do in fourth grade this year. Since it is Texas history, we read a trilogy of books by a lady named Janice Jordan Shepel. And the first book that you can ask your children about that we've started is A Paradise Called Texas. So we are able to bring in and integrate our social studies with our reading also. So most of the classes have started the book. There are a few students that may have been absent, so they may have to catch up on a chapter or two. But we're going to be working with that trilogy. And the boys and girls, once we get past about the fifth chapter, they just, they're like, don't stop. Let's read more. Let's read more. So that's something ask your child about. Have you been reading from Paradise Called Texas? We try to read from that novel usually on Wednesdays or Thursdays. So try to ask them about what's going on with Mina and her family. Because we're learning about a German family that's going to be moving to Texas. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about parent communication. The easiest way for you to communicate with us and the best way, because we see it every day, is your planner. So when your student brings home the planner, be sure, show me your planner. What do you have in it today? That's where you're going to see what we're working on in class, as well as assignments that they will have due for social studies or science throughout the week. You've heard some of this before, right? So. Everything we're saying, it all goes together. We work together as a team, and so we want to make sure that our children work together as a team as well. Uh, we'll also be conducting con conferences this year. We'll have one probably pretty soon coming up that we'll have our first parent conference in the classrooms, and then we'll have one sometime in the spring to have a, our two annual conferences. Uh, if you have something important that you need, a message that you need to get to your child during the day, Please call our classroom phones. They will not ring through into the classroom, but the red light comes on, and I know I see mine from across the room because it is so bright. For example, you thought you were going to be able to eat lunch with your child, and something happens, and you're not going to be able to eat lunch for your, with your child. Call, leave that message, and we'll make sure that the child receives the information so they're not worried that you're not there. Or if you have uh, an afternoon bus change or car pickup, call, leave a message, and we'll get them the right message on what to do. Now, there's only one thing different about the bus pickup, and this is something not really new, but last year, if your child needed to change buses, you know, they're assigned one bus. If there is an emergency situation that your child needs to take a different bus home, you must call Mr. Scott Stagner through the bus farm, and he'll get the information and get it okayed and get us the information to let that happen. So, you know, Going home to spend the night with a friend just because they want to, that's not an emergency situation. You've had somebody in the hospital, your child's having to go to their parents or their grandparents, and they live on a different street than your bus, that would be the kind of situation you have to call for a bus change. So I hope you all have a great year. We're enjoying your kids very much this year. Thank you.
My question is, what can you do as parents to support your kids and us as teachers? And you are doing it right now just by being here in this room. You took time out of your busy schedule to come and learn more about the fourth grade year, and we appreciate that. Um, I'm going to repeat a lot of what you've already heard tonight. One of the things you can do to support us is to make sure that you're communicating with us. We're going to try really hard to communicate with you through that planner, through phone calls, through emails. If you have questions, there's not one of us that's going to shut the door in your face or hang up on you. Please call us with any questions or concerns that you have, and we can address those. And if we, we will do it as soon as we can. We can't always pick up the phone right when you leave a message and call you back, but we will do the best we can as soon as we can. Um, encourage your kiddos at home that it's okay to bring home a bad grade every now and then. Don't chew them out. If they bring home a bad grade every now and then, we all have days where we don't do so well. Maybe we're not feeling good and we don't do well on a paper. Um, I just, I just think you need to support your kids, and you guys do that. Support your kids with positive. Try to be as positive as you can. By the way, it's nice to be in fourth grade for a change. I appreciate this team. The kids uh, from last year were kind of worried when they walked into my class. Well, first of all, they were worried when they got my name on their sheet of paper <laughs> because they were afraid they failed. <laughs> but I passed, so it was good to see some of the kids, it's good that I already know them because they come in my classroom and they know what to expect. They don't know that I can teach something besides math. <laughs> so they're learning that I know a little bit about Texas history. Um, just communication is the big thing for you to support your kids. Please check that homework folder each night. We send important notes home. Um, I have had some notes this week that are still in the folder that we sent home at the first of last week. So again, communication is a big key. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel like you can talk to us. I'm sure all of you are very excited you survived third grade. That is such a huge year. And no, as uh, having been a third grade teacher, um, being on campuses where there's been third grade, know that I understand that that's a big transition year. And know that your kids have done a lot of maturing in the past couple years. And, you know, we do still have star tests. It is very very rigorous and if you ever want to just see kind of what sample questions look like if you go to TEA's website and type in um, star tax samples or they'll come up with different things if you want to see the level of rigor that our kids are being expected to do they're being expected to read poetry and tell you what images they can see or how the meaning would change if they changed out a sentence or changed the title um, and so students are being asked to think critically on these things that when you and I went to school, we probably didn't do until we were a lot older. So there is a lot more pressure. There's a lot more expected of kids at a younger age. Um, and that's what the state has given us. And so when we're pushing these students, know that we're teaching those texts. And you are always welcome to go to TA's website and those texts are posted and you can see the different things that they're being asked of. And it is rigorous. And it is very different than when you and I went to school. It has definitely gotten harder. You see things and you go, I probably didn't do that till I was in sixth grade, or I probably didn't do that until I was in fifth grade. You're right, it has changed and there's a lot more expected of them. And the 20 minutes of reading, you've heard them talk about it a lot. They have four hours to do these assessments. And as your, fifth, as your third graders last year, they had about five stories that they had to read in four hours and answer questions about. And their math test, there's a lot of reading on there. And so when we talk about endurance, that's because the state's giving them four hours. Four hours. When it used to be an all-day test and the kids could take breaks and put their heads down, go, you know, take some more time. So there's a lot more expected on them that we're getting from outside. It's not just us. It's not just these teachers. It's everywhere in the state of Texas. And so just know that we understand, we feel the pressure with you because we want our students to be successful. At the end of the day, we want your child to be successful just as much as you do because every single child counts. 